Hello there, and welcome back to the Pokemon Scramble. Today, we will be watching matches 9 through 12 of the first round of action, featuring Melis Jewel versus Liquid Courage, Callisti facing off against Artemis, Sage doing battle with Battle Penguin, and Puniday squaring off against Mouse. Our first battle, Mela's Jewel versus Liquid Courage. Both of these teams have three under-evolved Pokemon. I would say that Courage's under-evolved Pokemon are a little better than Mela's Jewels, but that Mela's Jewels' strong Pokemon are much better than Courage's. Courage's legend Darkrai will be most effective if something falls asleep, but if that status effect doesn't get on the battlefield, Darkrai's stats pale in comparison to Curum Black. Tapu Lele will automatically get value from its ability when it enters the battlefield, and the combination of these two legends seems like a tough ask for anyone to defeat. But Getting through those two legends would leave Mela's Jewel's team at a severe disadvantage because the rest of her team doesn't quite measure up to the same level of power. Let's see if Mela's Jewel's team coalesces around its two legendaries, or if Liquid Courage manages to topple the legendaries and take down the rest of her supporting cast. Liquid Courage starts off with Overquill, and Mela's Jewel sends out Curum Black, which takes an Intimidate. Barb Barrage will poison Curum Black in addition to damage, but Curum decides to get a Dragon Dance in, boosting its speed and clearing off the attack drop from Overquill's Intimidate. Five Icicle Spears land on Overquill, killing it from full health. Darkrai now out, and it's going to take a Scale Shot. Two, three, four, and five times those loaded dice can really do some damage. Curum Black's defense is now down, but its speed boosted even further. An Intimidate from Sandile is going to reduce Curum Black's attack, but not so much that it can't kill in just two of its likely five Icicle Spears. Morolo comes out now, and Curum decides to Dragon Dance, a risky move when Morolo has a Moon Blast. Fairy moves very bad for dragons. Now knows that in the grave. Tapu Lele going to Calm Mind, but Morolo now putting down a Spore. Ninjask, the potential sweeper that is on Liquid Courage's team, going to Leech Life from Tapu Lele and get an automatic speed boost from Speed Boost. Another Leech Life will kill Tapu Lele, and that's both of Mela's Jewel's legends down. Minoon comes out, which is a big threat to the flying type of Ninjask, so Morolo put out to take that Thunderbolt. A Nuzzle will paralyze Morolo, but Morolo will put Minoon to sleep. It's a shame that Darkrai is already gone, it could benefit from that. But the Balloon is going to get popped from another Moon Blast, and Liquid Courage going to go back to Ninjask. It gets paralyzed momentarily, but a Lumberry will cure that problem, and Leech Life will cure the Minoon problem. Ninjask once again gets a speed boost as Venonat comes onto the field and suffers a dual wing beat that's going to get around the Focus Sash for being a multi-hit move. Ninjask now at two times its speed, going to boost its attack by twice as well with a Swords Dance, slightly risky there as Mime Jr.'s Psychic deals 75%, but a Leech Life will kill in one and bring Ninjask back into the green. Toad Scroll, the last line of defense for Mela's Jewel, but going grass is not going to stop Leech Life from being super effective, and Liquid Courage does manage to topple Mela's Jewel and will move on to the next round. Honestly, Morolol seemed like the most impactful player for Liquid Courage's team. Mela's Jewel choosing to Dragon Dance with Morolol in its face was the difference maker here. It looked like. Mela's Jewel had a strong start with Curum, but the rest of her team, including Tapu Lele, seemed to fold pretty quickly there. It's the loser's bracket for Mela's Jewel, and an evolution for Liquid Courage. Our next battle will be Kalisti versus Artemis. We've got a similar story for Kalisti to the one we just watched, with two incredibly strong Pokemon, in this case Arceus and Sceptile, that lead the way for the team, with the rest being a little bit less impactful. Kalisti's team has one slacker in Noibat, but the rest of them contribute at least a little bit. 
On Artemis's side, we have a bunch of statistical manipulation, from abilities that invert stat changes to abilities that trigger to boost stats when the enemy lowers them, and items that copy stat boosts. Artemis' plan is combat tactics. Let's see if Callisti's brute force can match up against Artemis' tricky techniques. Artemis starting out with Explode, and Wigglytuff for Callisti is immediately swapped for Arceus. Boom Burst going to take Arceus to 61% as Arceus gets the extreme speed running. Another Boom Burst brings Arceus down to the yellow, but now going to swap out to Uxy. Uxy takes 50% twice in a row, so that's going to die without bringing any value to the combat. Malamar takes a little over half itself, but Superpower will be enough to kill the normal god and boost Malamar's stats. Wigglytuff now comes out, and that's going to scare Malamar away, Alluring Voice not doing much to the incoming Nidorina. Toxic Poison applied to Wigglytuff, that's a good idea for something so tanky, and something that doesn't appear to have a good answer to Nidorina as it keeps using that fairy move into a poison type. Toxic Poison going to ramp in damage over time. Sceptile now comes out, perhaps into a poison move? No! Reflect going to be set up. Not a bad idea into Sceptile's physical damage, but it also has some special attack. Superpower going to deal about half to Sceptile. Malamar not going to survive another Dragon Pulse, even with the Reflect. Artemis now on Explode, which is not fast enough to outrace the Mega Evolved Sceptile. Kilowattril will come out and... Sceptile misses a rock slide, allowing Kilowattril to Super Sonic Sky Strike! Bringing Artemis back into this, an Air Slash, chance to flinch, no, doesn't work. Hyper Voice going to bring Kilowattril to 51%. Another Air Slash, another chance to flinch, no, Hyper Voice this time will deal a little bit more and kill the Kilowattril as Wigglytuff bleeds out from the Toxic Poison. Artemis down to only Trubbish. Trubbish goes poison, and Fracture going to the Dragon Dance. And Clear Smog is going to immediately remove those stat boosts, so Fracture going to go on the offensive in Dragon Claw, another Clear Smog going to bring Fracture down to a little under half, but a Dragon Claw going to finish off Trubbish, even the aftermath not going to be able to kill the Fracture. Kalisti takes this win. Kalisti's strong Pokémon just did what they were supposed to do. Arceus took down several with the extreme speeds. Artemis wasn't able to swap in safely due to having very little in the way of defensive Pokémon on her team. And Mega Sceptile missing a Rock Slide gave Artemis the opportunity to get back in the battle, but by then it was just a little bit too little, a little bit too late, because those Air Slashes could not stop Wigglytuff and Artemis' team just didn't have enough in the tank after sacrificing so much to beat the first three of Kalisti's team. Kalisti, moving on, Artemis, into the loser's bracket. Next up, we have Sage versus Battle Penguin. Good news for Sage, Battle Penguin doesn't have a single fighting type on their team, but they do have a Kofagrigus with Body Press, so that is something to watch out for. Fighting moves are the bane of Sage's team at the moment. Battle Penguin's team is missing a lot of statistics thanks to being under-evolved on four of their Pokémon. I think Battle Penguin's key to victory is going to be positioning that Kofagrigus well, getting strong defense boosts from Iron Defense, and then unleashing the power of Body Press onto Sage's team. The Iron Defenses will also be very effective against Sage, who has mostly physical attackers, so if that Kofagrigus can stick around for a while, it may be able to punch holes in Sage's team. On the other hand, if Sage can find a way to whittle away that Kofagrigus, it doesn't have anything for healing moves, so he may be able to win the War of Attrition there, and then overwhelm the rest of Battle Penguin's team with his superior offensive abilities. Let's see. Who takes the win in Sage versus Battle Penguin? Kofagrigus starts out. Good start for Battle Penguin. Cloister for Sage and a swap away to Gogoat. Gogoat is going to eat a body press and restore a little bit of health with leftovers, putting up a substitute next. Kofagrigus takes some time to put up an iron defense, which is going to be helpful, but a leech seed is going to start to drain the Kofagrigus away. Gogoat going to gain some health back and I think we're going to have to increase the speed a little here, as this is going to be Body Press. 
Leech Seed substitute for quite a while. At least until Gogoat no longer has any ability to make a substitute left, going to have to make another choice this turn, chooses to Energy Ball, leaves Kofagrigus at 7%, and Body Press will finally kill, but the damage to Kofagrigus has been done. Cloyster going to gamble on a swap out and Shell Smash here, but a Body Press will kill it from full Kofagrigus, proving its worth here. Diggersby pulls out Inferno Overdrive! And now a regular Fire Punch to kill a Mothim. Diggersby kind of wasting the Z-move there on a very badly damaged Kofagrigus. Now, Baltoy pulling out... But not dealing much damage thanks to Baltoy's low attack, which will also be shown by that explosion. Baltoy sacrificing itself and still only dealing about three quarters. Diggersby now earthquakes the Nidoran, returns the Steeny, both of those dying from full. Varum comes out and it's going to terrestrialize Steel, which is still weak to ground moves. And Diggersby cleans Battle Penguin's clock pretty much on its own. Gogo did a great job of setting up the Kofagrigus, but everything else that work was done by diggersby well done to diggersby bringing sage the victory battle penguin going down into the losers bracket that brings us to our final match of the day punaday and mouse Punaday has four fully evolved Pokemon. I highlighted two of them in Hariyama and Galarian Weezing in my preview of their team. Mouse only has two Pokemon that have no evolutions left, but doesn't have a particular superstar to point to. Dusclops will take forever to kill, and Zebstrika is incredibly fast, but those statistics on their own do not a victory bring. Mouse is going to have to dig deep into her bag of tricks to figure out a way to beat Punaday here. Let's find out if yet another unexpected, under-evolved Pokémon finds a way to become a hero in Punidae versus Mouse. Mouse leads with that Zeb Stryka into Punidae's Hariyama. Thunderbolt going to hit Hariyama for a little over a third, as Drain Punch takes a bunch of that back and takes Zeb Stryka down to 30%. Volt Switch going to get Zebstrika out of the way. Great move as Dartrix resists the Drain Punch. Hariyama has burned itself to use the Guts ability. Galarian Weezing comes in and turns off abilities, but a critical hit Air Slash is going to bring it down under half. Dartrix going to get out of the way as Toxic Poison comes in on Dusclops. That's an unfortunate swap for Mouse, as Dusclops would otherwise be incredibly difficult to remove from the battlefield, but Toxic guarantees it will eventually. Nightshade, a move that does not mind about the defenses or offenses of the defender or attacker, just going to deal good static damage, but won't be better against a weaker Pokémon, so with Tepig coming in, that's an interesting choice. Nidorino going to get taunted, so all it can do is attack, but it wants to attack anyway. Pursuit would hit Nidorino for more if it was swapping out, but Mouse has no intentions of doing that. Whirlipede going to get a speed boost now. Uses Protect to get yet another speed boost, and Nidorino will be blocked. Whirlipede throws away the speed boost, swapping out to Trevenant, which takes neutral damage from that poison jab and super effective damage from a Shadow Claw. Nidorino takes the first kill of the match. Whirlipede going to insist on using more Pursuits, and Nidorino misses Poison Jab thanks to its own ability. Pursuit hits once more for very low damage, and a Poison Jab will finish off the Whirlipede. Hariyama comes in. On a Poison Jab, can't be poisoned, it's already burned, but it will bulk up since it's slower, that's a bit awkward, it might die to a hit, but a Swap Out is going to be met with another Swap Out! Serilege and Dusclops now face off. Iron Head going to hit Dusclops for 19%. Nightshade doesn't matter that it's a ghost type move, not super effective, it deals static damage. Another Iron Head will kill Dusclops. Soul Rock, also very tanky, but an Iron Head going to cause it to flinch. Another Iron Head from Serilege, another flinch from Soul Rock. It looks like Punidae is trying to add hacks to their repertoire as Soul Rock doesn't get to move thanks to those flinches. A Sucker Punch will miss and Bitterblade will bring Nidorino down to 24%. Not using Sucker Punch this time means no priority. Serilege naturally faster will kill the Nidorino. Some 
inconvenient swapping happening here as another bitter blade will finish off the Zeb Strika. Dartrix is a grass type that's going to take super effective damage from fire. And Milsery going to be the last hope for the team will terastalize fairy, but Ironhead super effective into that. Milsery eats its Jaboka berry and spits the juice in Seraledge's eye, dealing it a little bit of damage on the way out. But Punidae dominates this fight, loses only two, and takes down Mouse's entire team. I think Mouse's team just lost the stat check here. Punidae had stronger Pokemon with access to better moves. Mouse's team just needs some evolutions to really get going, but how are you going to get that first win to get you that first evolution? I'm not certain. Into the loser's bracket with Mouse, and moving on is Punidae. Congratulations to our four victors, Liquid Courage, Kalisti, Sage, and Punidae. You will all move on safely into the next round without needing to fear the dreaded loser's bracket, in which a single loss will eliminate you from the tournament. Next time on the Pokemon Scramble, Dutch vs. Zedera, Bandit vs. Ren Camo, X Dropped Dead Z vs. Trev, and Heller versus Domo. Don't miss out on the final first round matches.